is our 4000 series 6x6 wiper slot disc that we're going to use today. DBA's packaging as the part number and also some very important information which is the fitting instructions on how to fit the disc correctly including tightening of the wheel nuts correctly and also additional information about the features of this disc rotor. Inside we'll actually find an instruction sheet. This has very important information about the cleaning of the disc rotor. Also has information about the cleaning of the hubs and so forth that are critical in fitting this disc rotor. It also has other additional information in regards to the heat paint and other features of this disc rotor. The DBA disc rotor comes packaged in a moisture proof blue plastic bag. This bag also contains a silica gel satchel. This silica gel satchel helps absorb any extra moisture that may get inside the bag to preserve the disc rotor. As you can see, the disc looks clean, but in actual fact, it still needs to be cleaned before it can be fitted to the vehicle and put into service. Okay, to prepare the disc for service, we need to clean the friction face. It's very important that we use the right cleaner. Today, we're gonna to use a brake clean. It needs to be an acetone-based cleaner, such as brake clean. Don't use any petroleum-based cleaners or carburetor cleaner because carburetor cleaner is a silicon based and can leave residues on the, the disc face. This will contaminate the pad and give poor braking performance. Then when cleaning the disc, we need to actually make sure that we spray the cleaner onto the rag. The paint that is on this disc can be easily removed with the brake clean. So if we spray liberally over the disc, it will wash the paint off. The paint is actually a, a heat based paint and will cure during service on the vehicle. So what we do is we basically spray the cleaner onto the rag and then wipe just the friction face area of the disc and remove what looked to be a nice clean disc as we clean away this surface, just how dirty the surface actually is. This is why it's so important to clean the surface. But the other thing that's very important we also need to clean the mounting face. We've gone to all the trouble of cleaning the hub, now we need to clean the mounting face. This helps to make sure that we remove any overspray from painting or any other contaminants that could be on that face which will affect the fitment of the disc. Now that we've finished cleaning the disc, we can go and fit it to the vehicle. As you can see, it fits on nice and freely and there's no issues with binding due to rust scale. We now need to check the installed runout on the disc. So what I've done is I've fitted three of the wheel nuts with spacer washers so that we don't bottom out the, the um, wheel nut. Now we're able to actually check what the installed runout is on the disc. Okay, we've now fitted the dial indicator set up on the outer edge of the friction face here so that we can measure accurately what the installed runout is. We can now rotate the disc and see exactly how much runout is installed in this setup. As you can see here, we've actually, with the hub clean and the disc clean, all fitted up correctly, you can see we have absolute minimal run out. It is well less than 0.05 a mil allowable tolerance. 